I always knew it was a trick and a con. I didn't truly understand things to the level I understand them now. But I had an intrinsic understanding, and I think everybody does. If you're if you're in a gas station and it's three in the morning and, and a Lambo pulls up and a guy gets out of it, you're thinking criminal, drug dealer, gangster. Yeah. You're not thinking, ah, he has a uni degree. Because you, you, you know, you're not gonna think that. So when you see money, people don't even associate the money they see with university. But then they go, I want to make money so I'm going to university. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So be a slave, be a slave, be a slave. Every single government in the world is interested in control. That's all they've ever wanted. That's all they ever want more of. Governments want control. They want to control their populace. They think of us as sheep. We're cattle to them. They want us to comply. They don't want our individuality. They don't want us to think for ourselves. They want us to just sit there and obey like robots. So every single one of them is slowly inching day by day pushing the limits, taking as much control as they can from the people to the people revolt. Mm -hmm. And if they do it slowly and incrementally, they get away with a lot. This is beyond money. The, the people in charge of the world print the money. They don't care about, about money. They don't care about economies. They don't care about taxes. All these things are brokey cons considerations. When you print the money, do you think you give a shit if the economy is good or bad? You print the money. You don't care. What you care about is when you click your fingers, do people obey you? When I talk about the Matrix, I'm talking about the systems which have been created by society, which are deliberately designed to enslave. In the movie, the Matrix were used for our body heat, but here in, in this Matrix, we're used for our efforts and our energies. And you're existing inside of a system which is deliberately rigged to make the rich richer and for the poor to stay poor. Yeah. And for you can sit there and get upset about it. You can sit there and cry about it and say the system needs to change, which is what some people do, socialists, X, Y, Z. But I think that's not I think. I know... That's a waste of time, right? That's futile. The best thing to do is to understand the rules of the game and find a way to win. So yes, the game is rigged. Yes, the rich are always gonna get richer. Yes, the poor are always gonna struggle. And that's the way the game is set up. So you still need to find the best move on the chessboard. There's no point sitting there saying, I wanna play a different game because that's never gonna happen. Because the people with the money are the people who have the control and they have the power and why would they have the game set up any other way? Why would they change? One of the largest things that hold people back from wealth is the people around them. Not only because of the mindsets of the people around them, but also trying to find people around you who you can truly actually trust is difficult. I always was always close with my brother because, and he's always been close with me because we are a team and you need to have a team. And if you have a team, you stand a better chance. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy. For every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money, you take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? It's the true nature of the universe. You have to learn that you, you have to take things from other people. And by taking it, I'm not saying go rob a bank. I'm not saying that. I'm saying comp completely the opposite. You can be a philanthropist. I'm taking money from everyone inside of hate you, but I'm changing their lives. It's a good thing. You can take money in a positive way. Most people don't look at the li look at life that way. And when you look at life that way, you need to start identifying. One of the things we teach inside of hate you is to identify every single time your money is taken from you. So I say this to people. I say for the next two weeks, every time you spend money, even if it's a pound, write down how they got it from you. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, all right, cool. You're walking down the street. You're going to Starbucks. You buy a coffee. Why did they take your money? Well, I wanted coffee. Yeah, but how? Okay, you wanted coffee, right? Cool. Did you only want a coffee because you saw Starbucks or did you want a coffee beforehand? Why did you want their coffee and not another coffee? Did you buy a cake as well? Why did you buy a cake? All right, cool. So now you identified how they took your money. Then realize how they could have took more of your money. You bought a cake, but you didn't buy a sandwich. Why? The sandwiches weren't on display. Or they looked cold. Or they looked rubbish. Or the woman who was serving me was old and ugly. Maybe she was a young cutie and talked to me about bologna sandwiches or a bomb. Right? So you just start identifying how your money is taken from you. Mm. Because once you identify how your money is taken from you, you can start to actually intelligently think about how you can take money from other people. If I had to open a, uh, a coffee shop, if I, if I sit in a coffee shop, right? If I sit in Starbucks, the whole time I'm in there, not only am I thinking about how they got the money from me and how much I spent, I'm thinking about how I could outcompete them. I'd sit there and go, okay, cool. I'm in Starbucks. I spent £5.68. I got a latte. I got a donut. And I'm sitting here. And that business place, that 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 commercial property right across the street is available for this. How could I outcompete this coffee shop which just took my money? What's the profit margin on this £5.68? How much did this cost them? The coffee, pennies. The donut, 30 p minute. Right? How much is the staff? They pay the staff minimum wage, £8 an hour. So I've already paid half. I've already paid 30 minutes work for that. Wait. She's there for another 30 minutes for free. 
right? How much is the rent? How much is the business rates? If I had to open up there, how would I attract people to come into my shop as opposed to their shop? They got a big brand name. I'm brand new. Okay, well, the bitch working here is ugly. My one's going to be hot. Boom, that's the beginning. Next thing, do they have any signage outside? No, I'm going to try and put some signage outside. Do they have parking? No, I need parking. But you need to start thinking about how you can convince people to give you their money as opposed to giving it to the places they already give it. And, and once you do that, people say, I can't think of how to make money. If you start doing that for a year and just keep a notepad, you'll have a hundred ideas of how to make money. You'll sit there and go, there's a place here that's doing this and we could do it better this way. This place online is doing this, we can do it better this way. And then, and then to get them all done, what do you need? Network. You need people. It's all about people. I always knew that even when I was fighting and I was always trying to find a way to make money. Even when I was fighting, all I did was try different ways to make money. I tried a, I tried a million things and that's what you have to do. You have to try a bunch of things and learn a bunch of lessons until you finally find something that works. The problem is as well, it's difficult because the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's, yeah. and don't, and don't be done with it. So you need to, you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to, uh, to a degree, some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So yeah, business studies, you're right. The book, that's, that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to, you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's kind of how it works. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting in the car and going to another meeting. Work. I'm going to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I can be the most talented tennis player in the world, but I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1% and now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard, so I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. The traditional, the traditional path to wealth is terrible advice. They'll go to university, get a degree, get a job, blah, blah, blah. That's terrible advice. We already know that. We talked about that. I think follow your passion is also a ter terrible piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. They, people say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do every day. I don't wake up full of like joy that I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or got to deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation and then you'll be able to, to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy them. It's called a job, right? Nobody likes their job. You like your hobby. I'm sure you like playing video games. Maybe 1%, 0.1% can make money from video games, right? Most people, you ain't ever going to make it. Yeah. Do you think the guy in China who owns a concrete plant is passionate about concrete? 
You think he's sitting there stroking it at night, <laughs> naked in bed? It's money. Be passionate about success. If you're passionate about money, then you can be passionate about anything. I'll be passionate about any business on earth that pays me. If you pay me a billion dollars to dig that hole, I'll be very passionate about that hole. I, I obviously know what I'm talking about to some degree, right? So if, if, if Mike Tyson walks in here and tells you he's going to teach you how to box and says you can't fight, you're a pussy. If that upsets you, then you can't learn, right? It's Mike Tyson. Just shut up and listen. <laughs> if, if, if someone richer than me comes along and says, Andrew, you don't know shit. You're a dumbass and you're a brokey. I'm going to sit there and go, okay, maybe I'm a brokey, Elon. Tell me something. Right? I'll listen. But if you're going to sit there and go, don't call me names, and then I'm not listening, you're never going to get anywhere, right? You don't, become, you don't become the master unless you're very, very good at being a student. And I've always been very, very good at knowing when to shut up. Oh, a lot of people with no money are, are, are really, really arrogant. I know a lot of broke people who are very arrogant. And their arrogance is a shield for their laziness. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. Quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have shit. So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. Right? You need the people who don't quit. I don't quit. Every single facet of my life is testament to the fact that I don't quit. When people see my plane in the sky, you can, you can say whatever you want about me. You can call me arrogant. You can call me anything you want, but you cannot call me a quitter. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never going to be anything. So look, everyone loves passive money, right? I make money as I sleep. I get it. You, you need to de-link your time to your money because if you're only working for money, you run out of time, you can't make enough money. I understand all those principles. My point is, if you have no money and you're coming to me saying, I want to make passive income, why are you not making active income? Get up off your ass and work first because there's no such thing as completely, truly 100% passive. You're going to have to check on it. You're going to have to maintain it. You're going to have to find a new tenant for that property. You're going to have to make sure that DeFi crypto farm you're in doesn't go to zero. It's not a rug pull. Yeah. You're always going to have to keep an eye on it, right? But the idea that people with no money are already so concerned with making money without work is amazing to me. You should be worried about active income. If you show me, if I'm a brokey, and you show me how to make $1,000 an hour, I don't sit there and go, okay, but how can I make that passive? I go, cool, I'm making $18,000 a day. I'm going to work. You don't need to worry about passive income until you have no more time. I look at passive income because I have 18 hours a day I work. When all 18 of those hours are done and my workload still isn't finished, I have to find a way to make some of those income streams passive, either via staff or whatever else. Yeah. And that's how I work smart. I use all of my time and when all my time is done, yeah, now I have to become more efficient yeah. so that I can get more done within the same time frame. To sit there and say, I don't want to use my time so I want passive income is dumb at, is dumb shit. The 16 year old making 45 grand a month. If he was to sit to me and go, I don't want to make the TikToks, I want someone else to do it, make it passive, that he wouldn't make any money. He's just working. You have to just work. At some point you have to bite the bullet and just work. So when someone comes to me talking about passive income and they're a broke human, you are just lazy. You are lazy. You'll never get anywhere. Lazy people never get anywhere in life, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter if it's tennis or money. If you're lazy, you're never gonna get there. To the normies, to the brokies, they're not ready to listen to it. Yeah. The Matrix, they say in the movie, people who are still dependent on the system will fight to defend the system. There are people who I will sit there and say to them, look, your university degree is a scam. They lied to you. I will show you how to make money. And their reply will be, no, I went to a good university. They are desperate. No, that degree means something. You work in Greg's, G. Doesn't mean any, shut up. They don't, they won't accept it, right? So certain people are not ready for the truth. People who are ready for the truth seek it and they find it. You need to live like God is always watching. You may wow. have the opportunity to do something bad or you may have the opportunity to steal some money or snake somebody, but in the end, you're going to pay for that and the bill will be paid. Mm -hmm. I think if you do the right thing, in my experience, if you're a person who does the right thing, firm handshake, is on time, doesn't lie to anybody, does what he's supposed to do, is honest with a good heart, is genuinely polite to everyone he meets. If you are that person, you get very far in life. I have I've yet to meet people who just do all the simple things right 
who completely fail at life. But I've met a lot of people who snake or steal some money and they get really rich, then they lose it all, or they get rich and end up a gambling addict or depressed or etc. So you have to just understand that God is always watching. He's going to reward you in the end. That's the first thing. And the second thing I will say is that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and you need to create your reality. I think the biggest problem with young people today is that they don't create their realities heavily enough. The people that they want to spend most time with aren't adding any value to their lives and then they end up wondering why they don't get it. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. The, people, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're going to end up like. They say, yeah, that's true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be. Why? You have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. If you were to come hang out with me and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. Right. You don't feel so with your friends. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. If you walk through life and feel like you have nothing to prove, you're a loser. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Then you are a loser because you are absolutely not the incorrect. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to your bloodline. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, you have two arms and two legs and you can think, and you're not trying your absolute best. That's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man. You have to build who you are. God loves to see that. Those people, for some reason seem to be enormously lucky, right? The person who goes, I don't have to prove anything to God. I don't owe all of my ancestors any effort. You know, for 5,000 years, people were dodging saber-toothed tigers and catching the plague and running from Genghis Khan just for my stupid ass to be born. I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them a thing because I want to play video games. These people are losers. You should walk through Earth with force inside of you. If I walk, as I walked into this hotel reception, everybody, not because they know who I am, but because as I move, even if, even if it's behind their head, people feel something. It's, it's an energy that comes from brutal competence. That's what happens when a predator walks in a room. You pay attention next time you're in a restaurant. If a man who's truly dangerous walks in, nearly every other man kind of looks up at the same time. Feel it. You need to or you don't survive. We've evolved with that to live. That's who I am. I couldn't imagine not being that man. I've done that because I've been trying to prove myself to my lineage my entire life. I wake up every day with something to prove. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. I wake up at the more. I'm in fantastic shape, four times world champion, fighting the matrix out here by myself, more. I will have to be braver. I must try harder. I, all I do is prove myself. So when I hear people go, I don't I have nothing to prove, then you're loser. Peasants have never felt like they needed to prove anything, but kings felt like they needed to go and conquer land. Isn't that co it's coincidental that the king, who already had it all, felt like he needed to go to some far-flung land and conquer it and take it and prove he's the king. But the peasants, oh, I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You're a loser. You're a dummy. I absolutely and utterly, completely have everything to prove to everybody all the time. That's who I am. I will prove anything to anybody. If I sit and say X, I will prove it to anyone. I can be checked any and their ancestors who fought in saber-toothed tigers or escaped the, the Mongol hordes or managed to dodge bombs in the Second World War. All the shit they went through just for this cretin to be born and to look at him, look at who he is, listen to his life story, listen to what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, and they would feel nothing but shame. Your ancestors did all that, all that struggling to survive, hunting, hunting and gathering, avoiding enemies, anything it took dying at age 30 from a tooth infection all the crap they went through just for you to be born so you could smoke weed and jack off that's what your ancestors died for that's what they worked so hard for that's who you are that's the end of your fucking bloodline do you feel no shame it's fucking shameful my ancestors will look at me and think everything we went through was fucking worth it
Your ancestors will look at most of these people. Their ancestors look at them and feel nothing but fucking disgust. Well, I guarantee even their fucking living relatives, their living parents, aren't even proud of them. Like the fuck? your own father's ashamed of you, and you don't even feel fucking motivated to do. Fucking. It's a fucking shame. If you were to go and look your father in the eye and said, you know what, I could have been a fucking, I could have been a UFC champion, I could have been a, a multimillionaire, I could have been a race car driver, I could have been a nuclear physicist, could have done all these things, but I was busy on. You think he's gonna be proud of you? No. No. And, and there's men here who will deny it, right? There's men who will go, no, 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 no. But those are the ones who are most lost. And they should look in the mirror, look deep in their own eyes and say, yes, I'm fucking disgusting. I can change this. That's the beauty about being a man. If you're disgusting, you can change it. That's the beauty. There's nothing stopping you changing it. You're right. And you must accept it. You must accept it first. Most of these people, what they do is they hang around with other disgusting people, and then they're a little group of disgusting people, and they think, well, I'm not disgusting, everyone's disgusting, and this is normal, and it's normal to be a fucking f off. Not in my world, it isn't. It's not, it's, not, it's not normal to be a fucking jerk off in my world. It's the things, it's the denial that's going to hold you back the most. The people who go, yes, I'm wasting my potential. Those are the ones who have potential. The ones who stand up and go, I am wasting my potential. I could be anything, and I am not that yet. They have a chance. The men who go, well, no, actually, I'm fine. They're f they're inside the matrix, fully slave-minded. They're a waste of time. But if you sit there and go, you know what? Yeah, I am wasting my potential. Yes, I can be more than I am. Even if I'm already great, I can be better. As good as I am, I still I still push myself to the limit every single day. I have every single thing a man could possibly want. I'm still pushing myself. This is your prerogative as a man. But you need to be instilled with a sense of duty, duty to your bloodline. You must want it you need to want it deep inside your soul i can't die as anything less than emperor it's it's my destiny there are duties that men must fulfill whether to god or to your bloodline if i feel extremely happy and excited i'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard and if i feel absolutely depressed and distraught i'm going to use that as endless energy and motivation to do amazing things and work hard it doesn't matter what you give me energy cannot be destroyed it can only be converted transferred. and transferred it doesn't matter what fuel you give me you give me diesel petrol kerosene vodka doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine hard work is going to come out absolutely success. that's all i know how to do making the best move on the chessboard regardless of how losing your position is is a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're f***ed. But still, regardless of how f***ed you are, there's still a best move. There's always a best move and a worse move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of ten, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of ten, the best move might be just enough to save your ass. And on a long enough time frame, if you play the game repeatedly, day after day, taking risks, always making the best move regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. You might end up somewhere near me. You might have dinner one day. You might stop being a brokey. You might stop being a loser. If your girl leaves you, the best move on the board perhaps is to go to the gym, perhaps is to send her flowers, perhaps is to never text her again. But you should make the best move on the board regardless. Even if you don't want her back, you should still make the best move. You should always think that way. What move will give me the best possible strategic position? That's how you think. That's how I think. Best move on the board is how you should approach your life. Next time you're in a situation, you should sit and say, okay, this is a bad situation. I'm but what's the best move I could possibly make? What's the outcome I would like? What's the most likely move to give me that particular outcome? And you'd be surprised what some of them are. I had a guy email me the other day saying he lost his job. And he was the worst salesman. Well, then you deserve to lose your job. That's how sales works. It's, it's fierce. He goes, well, I don't know. What should I do? I said, what's the best move on the board? He goes, well, I really want the sales job. I think I can get good at it. I said, well, then work for free. So do you have another job yet? He said, no. Okay, while you're applying for other jobs, instead of sitting around on your, on your ass at home, keep working for free for the company for two or three weeks and see if you can turn it around. And he tried that. And he couldn't because he's shit at sales. But... The point is, if he would have sat at home doing nothing, it wouldn't have helped him. The best move on the board was to try and prove to his company that he's actually worth something. If he was worth something, in those two or three weeks, he might have turned around and got his job back. He still got to apply for new jobs. He didn't lose anything. Best move on the chessboard. That's how I want you to approach your life, ladies and gentlemen. It's the mental model in which you should apply the scenarios to deduce what is the best possible action. Because 
If you're always making the best move, and very rarely making the worst move, it's pretty hard to lose. It's player versus player out here. The world is about winners and losers, and everyone is competing against each other. You are competing against me, I'm competing against you, you're competing against your friend. You, and you're competing against your enemies. You want a dollar, so does everyone else. You want that hot girl, so does everyone else. You want that house, so does everyone else. What's amazing is the things you want, the main reason you want them is because other people want them. So you can show off that you have it and they don't. It is competition. Kind of like the age old adage, if a tiger is chasing 10 people, you don't have to be the fastest. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy. Because he's fucked. So considering that a lot of people are constantly making the wrong moves, if you can just start to make the right moves most of the time, you'll see exactly how easy life can be. I don't even want your energy around me because quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. You can give it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack and table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. He'll look at it and it's just long and he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. People say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. Well, I'm going to sit here and once again explain to you how different the world is when you have a mind which isn't warped and affected easily by outside influences. You are never going to become a robot. This is nothing to do with not feeling emotions. This is nothing to do with just becoming an empty, emotionless void of a person. That's not what this is. This is about understanding that you're a human being. You're going to feel emotions. This is a beautiful thing. And making sure that you use them in the correct way. A, and B, you do not ever let them stop you doing what you're supposed to do. I say to people often, I haven't felt like going to the gym in two years. I'm wearing my gym clothes right now. I just finished training. I haven't felt like training in two years. I, after 10 years of professional fighting, after giving my life to exercise, genuinely, I have not woke up and felt like, oh, I really want to train. I haven't felt that way in a long time. That's why I retired from fighting. But I have still gone and I have still trained regardless of how I feel. So this is one of the tenets, and there's going to be a lot of things you're going to learn, of an iron mindset. It's the ability to not let your feelings affect you, and sometimes to do the complete opposite of how you feel. Because you're not going to very often feel like working hard. You're not going to always feel like doing the right thing. You're not always going to be motivated. The idea that you need to be constantly motivated shows how weak your mindset is. I don't need motivation to go to the gym. I cannot want to go with every fiber of my being, and I will still be there. Because I use my cerebral ability, I use my mind and I logically decide what I'm going to do with my day regardless of how I feel, regardless of whether I'm motivated or not. Because that's all life is and that's all the world is. Life is just getting things done, doing the right things, doing the important things, making sure they're done efficiently and thoroughly so that you live the best possible life. It's as simple as that. It's not particularly complicated. I'm not going to be and I don't want to be one of those guys who's like motivation, inspirational, that I've never been one of them people. I don't believe in motivation, inspiration. I don't believe in that crap. I don't believe that you need motivation to get things done. I'm not going to sit here and just talk a whole bunch of motivational things to make you feel good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the things I always did that allowed me to put together the mindset I currently have. So if you look at any story, literally any story with a hero in it, they all have one thing in common. And that thing is that there's always a villain. You cannot have a hero without a villain. It doesn't matter. You can think of any superhero, any comic book, any, any book you can think of, any movie, there's always a good guy and there's a bad guy. So for the good guy to exist, there has to be a bad guy. There's no other way for the duality of the universe to continue without this basic tenth. So you want to be the good guy in your story. You want, and in every, I've said this before actually, as a man, life is going to be difficult. It's more difficult than being a woman. It's more difficult than anything else. So it's very easy to see yourself. Life is actually easier as a whole if you see yourself as a hero. Because in every single hero story, the hero suffers. He has a hard time. And if you understand that you're suffering because you're a hero, then the suffering begins to make sense. So you can be sitting here right now and go, my woman doesn't respect me. Uh, I have no money in the bank. This is difficult. I, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. You can feel sorry for yourself or you can say, yeah, my woman doesn't respect me. I'm struggling. I can't make money. But you know what? That's because that's I'm a fucking superhero and my life's going to be hard because I'm a man. And as a hero, it's going to be difficult. These are the tests and the trials and tribulations I have to go through to become someone. Every single male superhero went through a whole ton of before he became superhero. You've seen the Batman movies. 
he was his parents died he was he was locked up in jail all these bad things happen and then they emerge as the hero and this is done for a reason because it's the reality of life especially as a man so right now you have to understand that you're the hero in this movie and if you're struggling you're struggling for a very important reason and how you handle these struggles and how you deal with these struggles are going to de decide the kind of person you're going to be afterwards you're going to be a superhero or you're going to succumb to them and you're going to fail so be happy that you're struggling because that's important that's the first thing second thing is there has to be a villain now most people think their villain is someone else you see this all the time the villain's the opposite of the hero so if you're sitting at home and you haven't got much money and you're and you're broke and you're pissed off and you're depressed and you look at me and i have four supercars and all these girls i'm traveling the world i go everywhere i want you may think i'm your villain People look at other people and say, oh, that guy has this, this guy has this, and they become envious. They think that's the villain. That's not true. That's not the case because every single person has different circumstances. There are things you have that I don't have and there's things I have that you don't have. So I may have had a genetic gift over you, for example, because I'm a fantastic kickboxer, but you may have been born more wealthy than me. I was born in a very, very poor family. So I had advantages and disadvantages. You had advantages and disadvantages. So comparing yourself to other people is, is asinine and it's inane because it's not a level fair playing ground. There are some people who are born to millionaire parents who are gorgeous, model, good looking and have six packs without trying. Some people are lucky like that. That's just how it is. So comparing yourself to these people is not going to help you. Your villain is nobody else. Your villain is someone you're going to create. And you're going to create your villain because he's going to motivate you to be the most powerful hero you can possibly be. So you're going to create your villain. And this is the task for the first week. This is a six week training course. And over each week, you have a very important task. And the task for this week is to create your villain. To make sure that there was no disadvantages involved. Your villain's going to be a clone of you. But what your villain's going to have is he's going to have some things you don't have. And your villain is going to be the person who basically, without requirement for motivation, without requirement, without being, no matter how he feels that day, no matter how stressed he is from work, regardless of what happens to him, your villain's going to be the guy who always does exactly what he wants to do. So your villain's going to be the guy who goes to the gym regardless of how he feels. Your villain's going to be the guy who approaches every beautiful girl he ever sees and says, hey, I, I really think you're beautiful. Goes over to him and talks to them. Your villain's going to be the guy who asks for a raise at work. Your villain's going to be the guy who does everything he wants, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's not motivated or not, regardless if he's shy to talk to that girl or people are watching or his ankle hurts, he doesn't want to go to the gym, whatever. Or his boss is, he thinks his boss is going to fire him. Your villain is that dude who does anything he wants to do. You have to sit and you have to make a list of all the things. You have to sit there and say, if I did everything I wanted to do, if I were to be the best version of myself possible, what would I do? Okay, well, I'd go to the gym every day. I'd get up at 6 a.m. and I'd go to the gym every day. You write that down. My villain is the kind of guy who reads really important books. I'm, I, I say I don't have time, but my enemy, this villain, he reads books. He finds time. He doesn't watch TV ever. He doesn't waste time ever. He doesn't eat junk food. He reads books. He writes it down. You have to make a list. Now, this list at first should be easy for you, but then you're going to get to about seven or eight things and you're going to stop. No, this list needs to be 25 to 30 points long, minimum. This guy you're building, your arch nemesis, you have to write down every single quality about this guy. What he does, he goes to the gym every day, 6 a.m. He doesn't watch TV, he doesn't eat junk food, he goes up to beautiful girls, etc., etc., etc. 25 or 30 points long. Because this is going to become your enemy for the next six weeks of training. You want to become a hero, you need someone to battle against. This is who you're battling against. You're battling against a better version of yourself, a version of yourself that doesn't succumb to how he feels, but does what he's supposed to do anyway. So this is who your villain's going to be. And when you're writing down this list, all the qualities your villain has, imagine what this person looks like. You have to put genuine effort into this. You have to imagine what he looks like, imagine how he walks, imagine how he talks, imagine what people think when they see him. Imagine how different you would be if you had been going to the gym every single day for an hour and a half, every single day for the last two, three, four years. Imagine it. Imagine how differently people would look at you. Imagine how differently females would, would treat you if you were jacked like that guy would be. You have to sit and you have to put down all these qualities and then once the qualities are there, 25 or 30 minimum, then you have to imagine what kind of person this is. You have to imagine what he looks like, what he talks like, what he thinks like. Imagine how he views the world because this is who you're going to be battling against. So you have to put genuine effort into constructing this person and understanding this person. The reason I'm saying do this is because this is what motivates me every single day. When I was training for a fight, the reason I'd always go train is because I knew my enemy was training. But when I stopped fighting professionally, I thought, well, I, what enemy do I have? And I realized I had to create my own. So when I don't feel like going to the gym, I imagine I've built my own enemy. I won't even list all the things that my enemy has. He has a whole bunch of shit I don't have. 
and he's a, a, he would be an impossible, nearly impossible person to be. But when I sit and I don't feel like going to the gym, I know my enemy's training because he trains no matter what, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's pissed off or if there's traffic or it's raining or he's tired, my enemy trains. When I see a girl and she's beautiful, but all her friends are there and I'm afraid they're going to laugh at me, my enemy wouldn't give a f He'd go over there anyway. That's who he is. He's a man. So when I understood who I was truly battling against, then you have two choices. You either rise up to try and take him on or you become a little pussy. You have the choice. Do I want to lose to this man, this man I've created and I've built? Do I want to lose to him or do I want to beat him or compete with him? And you have to make a choice and you sit there and go, well, I know that the person I created in my mind, my, my arch nemesis would go over there and he talked to all the girls. I need two of them, let alone one. This is an extremely important facet. And for the next six weeks, we're going to be doing lots of things that are going to revert back to the enemy that you've created. So you have to put genuine effort into putting together this person. You have to imagine everything about them. From start to finish, you have to imagine standing next to them. If you were standing next to this guy right now with no shirt on, who would girls want to, who would people respect? And the crazy thing about all of this is that this person is you. This person is you. It's just you with a little bit of a different path or a different take on life. It's you who's the person who does whatever he's supposed to do regardless of how he feels. It's you with an iron mind. This is the exact point. The reason creating this enemy is so important and the reason viewing how he, viewing him and seeing how he sees the world and, and understanding how important and powerful this person is, is important is because that person is you. That person is you who does what he's supposed to do without fail. That's all it is. And when you truly, truly put this person together and you truly, truly understand it, and you find out what you could be and you find out what you're battling against, you're going to become far more difficult to demotivate. It's going to be much harder for someone to say to you, don't go to the gym because you're going to know, well, my opponent, my enemy, this guy, give him a name, whatever. This dude's going to the gym. That's why he looks how he looks. And that's who I'm being compared to. So I have to go to the gym. Oh yeah, but you know, I'm tired. Well, you don't go then. My training partners want to go. Fine. You don't go. I am going. I'm not the guy who's going to let this man beat me. And you have to start comparing yourself to this guy in every single facet. I still do it to this day. I compare my bank balance to this guy's and he's killing me. I compare my body to this guy's, he's killing me. I compare so many things about myself. You guys may look at me and go, oh, Tate, millionaire, girls, this, that, that. I'm still comparing myself to this person I've created. And I know that I'm losing. And that's what drives me forward. That's why I don't miss the gym. That's how I find a way to make money. That's how I do whatever it takes to succeed because I know who I'm battling against. Most of you guys have no enemy. You have no enemy. Or you have an enemy which is somebody else. You look at a Justin Bieber or a Drake or something. That, that's not going to motivate you. That's pointless. It's not going to help you. Or you have no enemy at all. You have a support structure around you and you have people who say, Oh, you're great just the way you are. You know, you're beautiful just the way you are. And you're sitting there and living in your little comfort zone with a little bitch. Put this enemy together from start to finish. And when you truly put this list together, you truly create this person and truly understand that it could be you. It's going to be far more difficult to stop you doing what you need to do in the future. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Mm -hmm. You can give it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack a table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. He'll look at it and it's long. And he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have so if you're a quitter, I don't even want you even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. 